Hi, fourth grade teachers and students. My name is Ben. I am an elementary program coordinator uh, with Partnership for Kids, and I'm going to be reading your book today. Our theme is back to school. Uh, every time we go back to school, it's uh, all it's a little different. We have to learn new routines, new procedures. Uh, it's a new room, uh, familiar with new surroundings, new people, getting used to all these new things, all these new facts, all these new subjects and uh, it can be a little bit different, but it can also, over time, set you up for success. And as we do that, uh, you may find some new books and things that you encounter along the way. This is actually, it's really weird because this is one of the book, uh, book that I read when I was a kid. It's a book called Wayside School is Falling Down by Lewis Saker or Sachar. Not quite sure how it's pronounced, but I'd love to read you a small sample. So I've got this for you. Lewis Sachar, Wayside School is falling down. And there are actually several books about Wayside School, if you like this one. Chapter one, a package for Miss Jules. Lewis, the yard teacher, friend. The schoolyard was a mess. There were pencils and pieces of paper everywhere. How would all this junk get here, he wondered. Well, I'm not going to pick it up. It wasn't his job to pick up the garbage. He was just spoke, supposed to pass out the balls during lunch and recess and also make sure the kids didn't kill each other. He sighed and then began cleaning it up. He loved all the children at Wayside School, and he didn't want them playing on a dirty playground. As he was putting pieces of paper, a large truck drove by the parking lot. It honked its horn twice, and then twice more. Lewis ran to the truck. Quiet, he whispered. Children are trying to learn in there, he pointed at the school. A short man with a big, with big bushy hair stepped out of the truck. I have a package here for someone named Mrs. Jules, he said. Uh, I'll take it, said Lewis. Are you Mrs. Jules, asked the man. No, said Lewis. I have to give it to Mrs. Jules, said the man. Lewis thought a moment. He didn't want the man disturbing the children. He knew how much they hated to be interrupted when they were working. I'm Mrs. Jules, he said. No, but you said you weren't Mrs. Jules, said the man. I changed my mind, he said. But you said you weren't Mrs. Jules. The man got the package out of the back and gave it to Lewis. All right. Here you are, Mrs. Jules, he said. Uh, Lewis grunted. It was a very heavy package. The word fragile was printed on every side. He had to be careful not to drop it. The package was so big, he couldn't see where he was going. Fortunately, he knew the way to Mrs. Jewell's class by heart. It was straight up. Wayside School was 30 stories High, with only one room on each story, and Mrs. Jewell's class was at the very top. But it was Lewis's favorite class. He pushed through the door to the school and then started climbing up the stairs. There was no elevator. There were stairs that led down the basement, too, but no one ever went down there. There were dead rats living in the basement. The box was pressed against Lewis's face, squashing his nose. Even so, when he reached the 15th floor, he could smell Miss Mush cooking in the cafeteria. It smelled like she was making mushrooms. Maybe on my way back, on my way back I'll stop by Miss Mush's room and get some mushrooms, he thought. He didn't want to miss Miss Mush's mushrooms. They were her specialty. He huffed and groaned and continued up the stairs. His arms and legs were very sore, but he didn't want to rest. This package must be important, he thought. I have to get it to Miss Jewel, Mrs. Jewel's right away. He stepped easily from the 18th floor to the 20th. There was no 19th 
story. Mrs. Zarves taught the, taught the class on the 19th story, but there was no Mrs. Zarves. But at last, he struggled up to the final step on the 30th story. He knocked on Mrs. Jules' door with his head. Like, Mrs. Jules was in the middle of teaching her class about gravity when she heard the knock. Come in, she called. I can't open the door, Lewis gasped. My hands are full, but I have a package for you. Mrs. Jules faced the glass. Who wants to open the, do who wants to open the door for Lewis? All the children raised their hands. They loved to be interrupted when they were working. Oh, dear, who should I choose? asked Mrs. Jules. I have to be fair about this. I know we have a spelling bee, and the winner will get to open the door. Lewis knocked his head against the door again. It's heavy, he complained, and I am very tired. Just a second, said Mrs. Jules. Allison, <clears throat> the first word for you, heavy. Heavy, said Allison. H-E-A-V-Y, heavy. Very good. Jason, you're next. Tired. Tired, said Jason. Uh, S-E-L-E-E-P-Y, tired. Lewis felt the package slipping from, slipping from his sweaty fingers. He shifted his weight to get a better grip. The corners of the box dug into the sides of his arms. He actually felt his fingers go numb. Actually, he didn't feel them go numb. Jenny, package! Package, said Jenny. B-O-X. Package. Excellent, said Mrs. Jules. Lewis felt like he was going to faint. At last, John opened the door. I want the spelling bee, Lewis, he said. Very good, John, muttered Lewis. Are you going to shake my hand, said John. Lewis shifted the box to one arm and quickly shook John's hand and then grabbed the box again and staggered into the room. Where do you want it, Mrs. Jules? He said. I don't know, said Mrs. Jules. What is it? I don't know, but I'll have to put it down someplace so you can open it. But how can I tell you where to put it until I know what it is, asked Mrs. Jules. You might put it in the wrong place. So Mrs. Lewis held the box as Mrs. Jules stood on a stair on a step next to him and tore open the top. His legs wobbled beneath him. It's a computer, exclaimed Mrs. Jules. Everybody booed. What's the matter, said Lewis. I thought everyone loved computers. We don't want it, Lewis, said Eric Bacon. Take it back, Jack, said Terrence. Get that piece of junk out of here, said Mauricia. Now, don't be that way, said Mrs. Jules. The computer will help us learn. It's a lot quicker than a pencil and paper. But the quicker we learn, the more work we have to do, complained Todd. But you may set it over there on the counter, Lewis, said Mrs. Jules. Lewis set the computer on the counter next to Shane's desk, and he quickly collapsed on the floor. Now, watch closely, said Mrs. Jules. Everyone gathered around the new computer. It had a full-color monitor and two disk drives. I know, it was an older book. Two disk drives. Mrs. Jules pushed it out the window. They all watched it fall and smash up against the sidewalk. See, said Mrs. Jules, that is gravity. Oh, oh I get it, said Joe. Thank you, Lewis, said Mrs. Jules. I've been trying to teach them about gravity all morning. We've been using pencils and pieces of paper, but the computer was a lot quicker. Isn't that great? Guys, I'm so glad I got to read you today. That is just one story in this book, and there are tons of wayside stories that are all over the place. You guys would love it. Teachers, you can switch over to your curriculum right now. Uh, this curriculum uh, is actually a game. It's a memory game. It's called I'm Going Back to School. Uh, basically, all the students sit in a circle on the floor, and it starts off with one student. The first student uh, says their name. Uh, they say, my name is... 
Ben. My name is Ben, and they say I am going back to school, and with me I'm taking, and they can say any object they want. Any object could be an object in the room, object, first thing that pops into their mind. Uh, so I will say glass of water. Uh, so my name is Ben, I am going back to school, and with me I'm taking a glass of water. The student, said it's, the student that is sitting next to them has to say, This is my friend Ben. He is going back to school and he is taking a glass of water. My name is Robert. I am going back to school and with me I am taking a chair. The next person has to recall all that and add their own. And so this is a memory game. They have to recall not only the names of the other students, but also what they're taking with them. And these are things they're going back to school with. You've probably, uh, uh, the students in these rooms have probably gotten to know each other a little bit, but it's just a, another way to get to know each other just a little bit more. And also they're playing the memory game of the items themselves. Uh, it was so great to uh, bring this book to you as well as this game. Uh, I hope you guys had a great time and I'll talk to you again. Thanks.